Welcome to our show, Film Talk with AJ Dean. I'm AJ Dean, your host. And tonight we have a super special VIP author and screenwriter. His name is James Doc Mason, and he is coming out with a brand new book on screenwriting. So you're going to have to stay tuned. We're going to go over all the details. It's absolutely fabulous. Let's give him a super warm welcome. Hello, James. So great for you to be here. How are you? Thank you, AJ. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm doing great. It's just so, you know, it's such a thrill to have you, James. You've done a lot of great um, writing. You've been a screenwriter for a long time. Now you're going to be having another book released coming up in September, a physical book and an e-book. And we're going to get to that in a minute, But and that's super exciting. But um, let's do a little bit of a, d a deep dive Um but before we get to that, about you know how you got into screenwriting and became an author, I just want to give a special shout out and thank you to Kimberly Skirm and Patty Price. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, hi, Patty. And thank you so much, both of you. You're angels and you're wonderful. You're such a blessing. Thank you for introducing me to James and for referring him to us. He is such a delight. So just wanted to do that, right? Say hello to Thank Kimberly and, and Patty, right, James? Absolutely. They're wonderful people. I'm so yes, happy they... that uh, they put me in touch with you. <laughs> yes, they are. They are golden. And um, speaking of golden, uh, we've got, um, I, I want to get into what you've uh, written and the, the movies and all of that great stuff, but let's do a deep, deep dive first of how did you get into writing when, when you were growing up? Did you major in it? Did you go to school? Tell us about your love for writing. Well, as it turns out that my grandparents were both uh, English teachers, so I didn't know that it was in my blood because my mother was the rebel. She was not a writer. Uh, but in high school, um, I just, it came so naturally to me, writing uh, everything. And I took a poetry class and I wrote a poem that I didn't understand anything about subtext. And I just wrote it about candy. And that's all it was to me was a, a poem about candy, an object. And for whatever reason, my teachers just flipped out. They loved it. They thought it was brilliant. And um, I'm not going to talk about the subtext, but um, uh, it was rather adult. And I and it was just innocent. And I, what I learned was two things. One is that a writing can have unintended consequences. And two, I really liked the attention. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked the people who were responding to my poetry. Um, and then I got into college and I and I got a degree in advertising copywriting. Uh, if you'll remember in the 80s, there was a TV show in the early 90s too called 30 something. Yes. And, and, um, yeah, wonderful show about advertising. And, you know, as a young man trying to figure out, you know, what it is I wanted to do, I thought, you know, advertising copywriting would be the thing. And uh, then in, um, in, the, in the early 90s, I um, had to get a real job. And um, because my wife got pregnant and with my oldest child, right? Now I have four now, but Back then, that was the first one. I had to get a real job. And I got a job working for, of all places, Blockbuster Video. And as it turns out, I had a passion for movies that I did not know, right? And um, that led to me owning a video store in the mid-90s, uh, 93 to 96, um, where uh, all I did was watch movies all day long. What an education. And I went back to film school. And by then I was a little older than everybody else in, in, in school. And uh, so they, again, they looked up to me and I'm like, well, you know, 
okay, I would rewrite everybody's scripts. And that's how I got the name Doc, playing poker with my friends and, and rewriting everybody's scripts. And then something crazy happened. Uh, I moved to Hollywood and directed a feature and I did not like that at all. I did not like that. Com I mean, in, in film school, we were making films on weekend, no pressure, everybody's having fun. But the pressure of, you know, being responsible for hundreds of thousands of dollars and having to make the right decision just under pressure wasn't for me. And I'm glad I found that out soon because what I did discover is that the, my favorite part about making trespasses was the fact that it was, uh, that I wrote it, right? And everybody responded to that. And I felt like, well, that's great. The problem was that trespasses as a feature film uh, never got finished, right? So wow. years later, I decided um, that I needed to finish it. So um, I took the, I had the footage that we had uh, and I took it to an editing school and I said, will you edit this for me? You know, use it for uh, educational purposes, my footage. And they edited it into a 23 minute short that everybody loved <laughs> it was like what the heck um and um in the meantime i had been writing and writing and writing and i kept writing and kept having more kids and <laughs> you know uh and um trespasses went out on the festival circuit and we didn't really win anything but we got a lot of positive responses and i thought well uh I'm, I, I, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to be the best writer that I could be. And, um, and so I kind of just retreated back to, to learning how to be the best writer I could be and trying to get the next project made uh, without me as the director. And, um, uh, you know, as you know, it's it, Hollywood could be a, 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 a fickle master. It's a difficult thing to get a movie made. Oh my and, gosh, yeah. And so um, what I found is that I really, and I, I've been working in advertising since, on, on, well, I, in, in this particular job since 2000, right? So that's been a while. Yeah. And I, I'm now an executive and I'm now doing, um, you know, I'm not doing anything creative in the advertising agency. Uh, but that allows me to do the things that I love to do. And that's two things. One is uh, to write. Uh, and two is to help people tell the story that they want to tell. And that'll we'll talk about that more when we talk about my book. But um, um, the next thing that happened um, was that the writers group that I run in Santa Monica, um, one of the uh, writers asked me to help him write a script that he was going to make uh, called Caged. Um, and um, I'll be brief with that. It was a um, movie that they had a little bit of funding for. We, we wrote it in over the course of several months and uh, got a great cast of really fantastic actors. Eddie Gathegi, uh, he was um, in uh, X-Men, uh, first class, he played Darwin. He was in Twilight. He, um, you'd recognize him because he's the only African American vampire in the movie, right? Amazing. And uh, he was also the bad guy in a season of uh, NBC's TV show, The Blacklist, with James Spader. And uh, he did so well in that show, unbelievably well, that after they killed him at the end of the season, they brought him back to life and gave him a sequel. Gave him a, a, a spinoff called Blacklist Redemption, awesome. uh, which lasted a season, but nevertheless, uh, you know that's how good of a of a an actor Eddie is. And then the other star of that is Melora Hardin, who everybody knows as Jan from The Office, among other great, you know, characters that she's played. Like in, I think it was Transparent, she played a role, um, a major role, <laughs> and she is the sweetest lady ever and i hope to work with her on every project that i ever do because <laughs> she's that great um and uh um and then um moving a little forward 
Uh, another uh, writer in my writers group asked me to uh, help her with um, uh, a short that she wanted to write about, uh, a, I had been bugging her since like, like 2009 to write an English language uh, samurai movie. I mean, I could have written in Japanese, but I'd have to learn Japanese first. But I, <laughs> but <laughs> the idea was that um, there's a whole market for uh, samurai movies uh, in English. Wow. And um, yeah. And so um, again, I was able to um, help her write that. And uh, and we won uh, several. Uh, well, we were finalists in a lot of um, screenwriting contests that gave her the confidence to make the movie. And then once the, the, the short was made, uh, it did so well, it won some minor festivals and showed in some major festivals. So it's a, and now it's available um, for free to, for anybody to watch on uh, on YouTube. It has over 550,000 views without any marketing because it's, I mean, she did, they just knocked it out of the water. I mean, I helped, I, I came up with the story. We wrote the script. We, you know, I mean, but it was really the execution of the movie that makes it so great. It, it all starts with the script though. So two people from my writer's group, you know, are how I got there. Um, and then over the years, there've been other projects you'll see on the um, uh, Chakra Love uh, was a friend of mine who I co-wrote a script with. Uh, he was, um, he uh, wrote a, a cute little uh, romantic uh, comedy and uh, I just was there to help him uh, to make that vision come true, which is honestly my favorite, favorite thing in the world to do is to help people uh, explore the vision and execute on that vision to its highest level. I love that. I love that so much. You are a facilitator and you're a teacher also. Um, if you will, I hope that's okay to say, because I think it's one of the highest and most honorable things to, to be on the planet and help and teach others. And so thank you so much for that, James. And, and I just have to um, congratulate you on Caged and, um, yeah. and uh, Trespasses. And I love these movie posters. I'm just going to go back here to the, uh, it, it, they're just phenomenal, beautiful, beautiful posters, very dramatic. And then also, yay and chakra love here. We see you have, you've won awards. You've got nine awards on yay. And you must be so proud of these. And another award for uh, chakra love. And so it's just so wonderful to hear your story and how um, you contributed to these and created this. You know, writing is in your blood. And I think that's in, in your DNA. And it's it's wonderful. It's it's really really and and thanks to your parents, um, grandparents also, mostly. <laughs> what's, that, what's that, James? Grandparents mostly. My mom was uh, was the, you know. She she was not a writer. She was a reader, a voracious reader, yeah. and uh, and you can't have uh, writers without readers. We need a lot more readers than we do writers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's so true. And um, I did want to circle back also and say Blockbuster. Oh my gosh, I remember Blockbuster. I loved Blockbuster. I had a Blockbuster card and I know a lot of people watching this will remember. It was so much fun to go to the video store and uh, pick out, you know, it was exciting. You'd get in the car, you'd go there. It was a big event. Um, that's all changed now, but I, I cherish those memories of going with my father and my family and you were a part of that. So thank you so much, James. Yeah. So one of the things that I think, um, you know, a lot of the time you'd go to the store and you'd browse and you'd check it out, but then you'd find this one guy sort of like the Quentin Tarantino who, who could recommend the great movie that you've never heard of. Right? <laughs> yeah. And right. that, that turned out to be me. <laughs> I'm the guy who everybody came to. Uh, the only movies that I really wasn't a big you know, expert on was horror movies. But when it came to like the obscure foreign movies or the um, the the, you know, B movies, the Corman movies, I knew them. I mean, I just I don't know how I just I must have just spent my entire youth in front of uh, the TV late late at night or something like that before <laughs> before the. 
But there was a guy who came into the store and uh, who knew more about movies than anybody I'd ever met. And that's because he read um, the those guides. They remember the movie guides that, you know, like Roger Ebert would come out with and had little descriptions of every movie. And he knew like everything. I'm like, oh my God. He goes, I've got 9,000 videos. I'm like, if you've got 9,000 videos, you got more than a blockbuster, you should open a store. And I said, if you ever open, want to open a store, let me know, I'll work for you. Because this guy, I could learn like everything I knew about movies. And That's so, cool. so like a year later, he comes to me and says, I'm ready to open a store. And so I went and opened the store for him. And, um, and that was like the best learning experience. I got to learn everything about genre because um, you know, when you go into a blockbuster, you see, you know, drama and comedy, right? But when when he talked about genre, he talked about it like, like, like so detailed and and like what all these movies had in common. I'm like, what an experience! Yes, and like so I'm sorry, like film analysis and lighting and uh, depth of field and. Um, all different kinds of um, camera angles, that kind of thing, right? In the, well, in... I'm, I'm talking more about genres like, oh. like, like romantic comedy and action comedy, and okay, and like, like just I'm talking about story level storytelling as opposed to filmmaking. Oh. Okay, and um, and so the like the Roger Ebert and the um, uh, and these big books of movies that had the description, they became sort of like my reference material. I don't yeah. want to say my Bible, but I don't want to be, you know, but they were really something that I <laughs> looked at every single day. And by reading those things, I became, my ear became attuned to how to describe a movie in very, very brief, briefly. Now we'll, we'll talk about why that's important in a minute. Yeah, yeah this is, this is amazing. Um, so he, he was kind of like a, an encyclopedia of genre, drama, romance, comedy, of everything action all of that mm. did he talk to you about film and an, um, analysis like um opening scenes ending scenes of, of film directors anything like that or was it just the movies that he loved it was well it was interesting because it was film school in in one sense uh not because he was an, that analyzing the film but because of the things that he liked and the things that he could talk about um uh, He's like, all right, these are the four movies you need to watch today. Holy moly, four <laughs> movies. Like, all right, so I was watching four movies a day for years. Trying I love to get that. Up what a dream, about, right? Oh, I'm sorry? Isn't, isn't that a dream to watch four movies a day? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and not only that, but to learn about um, like all these great movies from from the thirties and forties and fifties and wow. you know, like for instance, one of my favorite movies is Laura from 1944. Oh, I love that. That was my dad's and my favorite too as well. Oh my gosh. That's so such a great movie. So great. Tell, tell yeah. me what you love about it, James. Well, of course, you know, Jean Tierney is, you know, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And so when, when um, Dana Andrews falls in love with the portrait, because she's so beautiful, um, you you buy it. It's like, yay, she's <laughs> yeah. dead, but he's in love with the portrait, right? And then she shows up halfway through. It's like, it's fabulous. Oh, holy moly, she's not <laughs> dead. Then who the hell is dead? Well, that's the mystery of the movie, right. and it had me going from the from the beginning to the end. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my god, like. And uh, Vincent Price is this southern, you know, with this great southern drawl. And I'm like, that's not the Vincent Price we know. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, it's uh, the mystery and how it solves the mystery with um, um, with the detective. And, oh, it's just an all time it's great so noir. Right? So, so I love film noir. Yeah. I love that, too. And it's one of the best. And I'm so glad you shared that with us. Um, it, it really is up there. And um, yes, now I want to talk a little bit now. I want to switch it up a little bit. 
And uh, so I appreciate you so much that you love cinema and film, 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 film. I just love that. Um, but I do want to switch it up and talk about mastering the log line, how to excite Hollywood with a single sentence. This is your new book coming out. It's going to be a physical hard uh, paperback book, hard cover, or hardcover and paperback book. Is that right? And then an ebook as well. Is that right? That's the, that's the plan. I don't know that necessarily anybody will want to buy a hardcover, but um, you know, I've got this, uh, oops, let's see if it'll come into focus. There it is. <laughs> um, but Perfect. it's, uh, you know, it's a real, it's a real page turner. <laughs> yes. Now it's um, releasing September 1st, right? September Jay? 1st on Amazon. And I'm, um, I'm, um, you, the idea is that uh, you could go into a Barnes and Noble and order it if that's how you prefer. And I'm hoping that I can have it in some small, um, I, I love the idea of these um, independent booksellers, uh, but they, um, I, I'll have to make those contacts. So if anybody has any contacts with little bookstores that like to sell books about screenwriting, I would love to do a, you know, a screening, I mean, a, a book signing at one of those uh, little, that, that would be just like a dream come true for me. Absolutely. So how can they get in contact with you? You're on Facebook, right? And Facebook, um, Facebook and Instagram. What's the best way well, to reach you to, um, to get a book deal uh, tour? <laughs> well, you can contact me at screenrioter at gmail.com, S-C-R-E-E-N-R-I-O-T-E-R -E 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 at gmail.com. Or just go to the website, masteringthelogline.com, and uh, you can just, um, there's a contact page on there, and you can reach me through that. This is fabulous. Okay, yeah. and I, I know that you'll, uh, this is going to be a great success. I want everyone to check it out. It's a mm -hmm. fabulous book. Thank you for gifting me a, co a copy. Um, James, I love it. And um, I want to read it thoroughly in detail um, again. And, uh, but let's talk about the log line. There's a, you put a lot of detail in this book and you really break it down step by step. Um, I love the detail that you put in and you analyze each thing so that every, by the end of it, you're really comfortable about the conflict, yeah. the protagonist, the antagonist, the um, excitement of the words. Let's talk a little bit about that, but that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, sure what and you go into what a log line is and mm -hmm. you give examples um do you have a favorite log line though i wanted to ask you do you have a favorite log line i know in in your book you have something you have something from star wars um i have i have many different examples um yeah uh, um you know i think I, you know, the thing is that uh, I don't have them memorized, but I'll tell you the one that was the hardest to write. Okay, let's um, do that. Um, so one of my favorite movies of all time is Amadeus. Oh, oh yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. And Amadeus has uh, an observer character, uh, and uh, which is Salieri. And he is confessing uh, to a priest about how he murdered uh, Mozart, right? That is essentially a wrapping story around the central conflict of um, um, Mozart's um, music, right? This, this contrast between Salieri and Mozart and how Salieri um, um, you know, would give up anything to be a great uh, composer and um, Mozart was this effortless, effortlessly brilliant composer. That's the central conflict is this idea that Salieri uh, feels betrayed by God, right? For this, um, and, um, and so the question is, how do you describe all that in a single sentence, right? It's a and lot, so, isn't it? It's yeah. a lot to do. Right, so the idea is that you have to um, really focus on the central conflict. And the central conflict is uh, not the wrapping story, um, the narrating story, or the context of the, the 
the, the, the outer shell of the story. It's really between Salieri and Mozart. And so the idea is when I figured that out, um, it kind of unlocked this idea between, um, um, you know, the main character and the opposition and how I should describe it. And when I, um, I think if you don't mind, I'm going to, um, um, I'll look up the, the uh, log line real quick for, for Amadeus. Oh, perfect. That's wonderful. And um, in the meantime, I'll just say that uh, you can also pre-order James' book, uh, James's book, Mastering the Log Line, How to Excite Hollywood with a Single Sentence, because that's what's most important to the executives and the studios. That's the first thing that they read. And uh, it's very, very important. It's, it's an important topic because um, that's what the right. scripts in Hollywood are all based right. on. Back to so you, James. So let me just first say that um, in a log line, I talk about um, the elements of story that are necessary to describe the central conflict. And so this book is really an exploration of the elements of story. And so those elements very briefly, because it's, you know, it, uh, it's, there's a lot to go into, but there's context and setting, there's the main character, there's opposition, there's uh, what I call the trigger. Other people might call it the inciting incident, but I, but I build on that. Um, so it's not just a trigger. It might be a triggering event or a series of events. And there's also an epiphany, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that's, that makes the character aware of, um, uh, of the consequences for not acting. Right? I'm getting to, into too many details here, but I'm going to go on to the other elements. There's goal. There's, uh, stakes and consequences, tone and style, there's a flaw in description. And so all of these things um, kind of play together and in about 35 words, create uh, a meaningful um, um, empathy with the audience um, through these elements. And it all happens within about 35 words. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? It really is. And I wanted to ask you, that's amazing. So it is about 30 to 35 words. But let me ask, let me ask you, um, regarding the studios, um, because they put a lot of money into their scripts. Um, why is the log line so important, James? Right. So it's a very good question. And the, the bottom line is that there's just too much to read. And the, the reader has to have some way of filtering out what may be a very brilliant story, but may not have anything to do with the kind of movie that they want to make. Conversely, a log line may be, you know, for, you know, their specific genre and just ideal for them. But if the log line is crappy, they can also know that there's probably problems with the story itself. So it's um, a, a good log line reveals um, um, so much about the writer and the story. And so I, there are the, the purpose of the log line, though, is to get the, the, uh, the industry professional to read uh, uh, the script. Right. That, and so when they are excited by the central conflict, they, when they know what they're getting into, uh, they can get excited if they, you know, it's not like some clickbait headline where, uh, you know, you promise uh, that there's going to be conflict, right? Mm -hmm. That's not what a log line is. That's actually a premise. A premise is the promise of conflict, but the log line is the specifics of conflict. It is really all of those elements, the, 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 the main character and the opposition and the setting and the context and all of these things that make it clear. So let me just tell you the um, the log line for um, Amadeus and see if you can see the story in this one sentence. And this is, um, I think, 35 words. So in 19th century Vienna, living in the ever-growing shadow of the effortlessly brilliant but vulgar Wolfgang Mozart, 
a pious composer loses his faith and, despite God, plots the murder of his young genius rival. I think that's brilliant. Uh, and I I loved the description of the words. There's adjectives in there. There's adverbs. And uh, along with the uh, topic and the subject and the genre, and there's also uh, descriptions of it. So uh, description words as well. So that figurative is language. It's a whole chapter. I have a whole chapter and a glossary of how to use figurative language. Figurative. To so figurative language, is that what makes it flow so well and make it and makes it musical, James? Is that exactly right? Um, in the book, I describe it as um, like a songwriter's best friend, um, figurative language. Um, you know, in poetry, everybody knows rhyming structure, right? And they know meter, but um, there's assonance and consonance. And, um, uh, you know, assonance is when the like the the vowel sound at the beginning of the words the consonants is like uh the consonant at the beginning of the word and there's i have a list of about 20 in the book um That's so great. um most of which uh you know word choice is such an important thing when you're talking about just 35 words yes um and um and of course the words are going to serve multiple masters right mm -hmm. so words uh, so when I talk about, um, I kind of used a, a more formal uh, uh, description of Amadeus, right? So it's it felt like uh, it came from the movie, at least in, to my mind, it did. Right, that's uh, right, yes. It doesn't feel like a modern, you know, hip, um, sarcastic or anything. It feels very much like the tone of, and that's what, you know the use of figurative language and really being specific with word choice um the thesaurus is our best friend in log lines <laughs> i love thesauruses and so it it has to it doesn't have to its purpose is to be impactful and powerful uh delivering yeah. delivering in a concise short um abbreviated sentence the right. main the main elements the main action and um, also a little bit of a teaser so that it, it excites the executive, the studio executive to want to know more. So, right. so if I could very briefly, I talk about the four promises of what gets uh, the four, four things that can help get your script read. Oh, and cool. the log line is just one, right? There's, right. Um, there's, if you have a good reputation, if people know who you are, yeah. Right? Uh, people might read your script True. if you're recommended by someone else Absolutely. their reputation right that'll get your script read maybe it'll maybe it'll get your script to the top of the pile but those two the writer has no uh no control over the the other two things are the premise which is the promise of conflict um yeah. um it, without the specifics of of character or plot and the one thing that the book is about the the plot right the log line the log line um talks about plot and character and and conflict narrative conflict not just you know basic bit you know conflict but like story level conflict big time conflict right yeah. so and and so what the book describes is how to make that uh uh how to excite the executive with those things by making sure that it, the the goals and the stakes are meaningful for the characters. If they're meaningful for the characters, they're going to be meaningful for the audience. Uh, and uh, making sure the consequences, the negative consequences for failure are meaningful, which means why does the, the main character have to succeed, right? Because, uh, you know, if we don't know why they have to succeed, we don't know what they want, we, why are we paying attention? When, it might be because they're you know the actor's a good actor or because you know your you know your friend wrote it you know <laughs> i don't know but <laughs> really we want we're trying to create this bridge between uh the writer and what what they're trying to tell the story and the audience yes and this is crucial because if the log line is not um impactful and powerful and delivers the correct message representing the entire script 
So it's quite a responsibility that then the studio may say no, right, James? Well, exactly. And I'll give you another example um, from film history. Um, when uh, Some Like It Hot, do you remember this movie? Of course, everybody it. does. Yeah. Yes. Did you know that the very first uh, test screening, it tested horribly, horribly. Why? Because there was no expectation. Nobody knew the movie. They didn't know who was, um, you know, they didn't know anything about it. And, you know, so the movie opens up and it's this gangster movie, right? This, these two musicians witness the murder of, you know, the St. Valentine's Day massacre and they are on the run. And then it turns into a fluff comedy, <laughs> right? Can you yeah. imagine the disappointment for people who are looking for this gangster movie to continue? <laughs> right um so the of course the studio said let's make some changes you know we got to make some changes it's you know it, it was horrible and the of course billy wilder knew that it was freaking brilliant made a couple minor changes but did one major change before the next screening he told him everybody he told the audience it was a comedy oh my gosh right? um, and what happened with the next um with the next screening blew up everybody mm -hmm. knew it was going to be i mean everybody loved it the riotous response everybody knew it was going to be a big hit and it be, becomes an all-time classic but if if not can you imagine if billy wilder had made other changes to try and acquiesce to the will of the crowd right who had no expectations mm -hmm. expectations are everything especially in uh in the pitching of a project right mm -hmm. if we if the if you're in the elevator with a, an executive and they give you the permission to, to pitch them, right? I wouldn't just automatically just belt it out. But if you could say three things, you could really give them everything they need to know. The first thing is um, the premise, you know, the general, the, the big idea of the movie without the specifics, that's the promise of conflict. Wow, that's an exciting promise, right? And then, then say the log line, and now they know the plot, the central conflict. They know the main character, the opposition, and they and um, they know that there's specific exciting conflict that they want to see. And the third thing would be uh, something I don't discuss in the book, but I have a firm belief in, and that is that the writer should have uh, a what I call a thematic statement. They should know how they want to tell the story from their perspective, right? And so with those three things, um, the premise and the, and the log line, the, um, they have all the things that they need to know for the story. And with the thematic statement, they know how you're going to, why you're the right person to tell the story. So- Beautiful, beautiful. I love that. And um, I wanted to also circle back and thank you so much for sharing that because that's a great summary of what's most important, the important elements of, of the story uh, to represent it. And I wanted to circle back and say, I loved Marilyn Monroe and I loved Jack Lemmon. And of course our favorites, Tony Curtis, all of them. And oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's also it's also a feel good. It's very fast in the beginning, but it's a feel good, uh, and then it starts to calm down after they change, uh, get into costumes, uh, which I love that aspect of it because it's fun. And then the music happens, and it, it's so much. It's a feel good movie. It's it's funny, and of course, you know, you're. I, I love. Um, <laughs> I love the um, how they banter back and forth with each other. <laughs> and it has one of the best last final lines of a movie ever. Yes. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Just saying that and we're laughing because it's such a great perfect ending. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and, and I loved it in be, being in black and white. And that was Billy Wilder you mentioned. And, and IAL Diamond. Yeah. Wow, what a mastermind uh, yeah. director. And we're just so thankful to have, you know, mm -hmm. great, brilliant, right. yeah, brilliant directors and writers. Yeah. Um, and in the following year, they came out with a movie called The Apartment, which won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Um, and I think is the only comedy to ever win the Best Picture. Wow. And um, through the book, 
I go through three examples as I'm going through. I give hundreds of examples and I break down about 45 different log lines. Uh, but um, three of the log lines I go through in detail every, um, after every chapter, we end with the exploration of that element um, using um, the apartment uh, as one of the examples. Lord of the Rings is another example. So, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I love that. So, and it's a, and the other thing that I should say about the book is that it's not just um, a um, passive read. I'm asking the 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 reader to take the time as they're doing this to explore whatever story they're working on and go through the elements. Um, and I give the tools to go through each of the element uh, um, before in the uh, we come to the end of the book where we're bringing all the elements together and, and reducing it down into a log line. Um, so it's hands-on. Yes, it's a beautiful book. It's absolutely beautiful book. I want to recommend everyone to support you, James, and uh, check out uh, your book and buy it and enjoy it. And because I know you will, it's one of the best books out there. You write very, very well. Um, it's a pleasure to read. Um, from what I've read, it's very, very easy to read and understandable. And I did want to ask you a special question because I love the design. You know, I'm a graphic designer and I love the design of your book cover. So who designed your the cover of your, your book? And tell us about that. Okay. So I have a um, genius daughter. She's 14 years old. She's just going into high school. And uh, she is quite the artist. Uh, she's an animator uh, and um, she does like anime style, uh, really fantastic. Re I mean, when you think about, you know, like juvenile artists, you think, you know, you give a lot of credit to the fact that they're just 14. Well, this young lady does stuff that blows my mind. And I asked her if she would help me to design um, not just uh, the cover, but the like the ornamental art that goes inside. If you notice the cover, she designed um, she designed the entire cover. Wow! Uh, but the uh, she chose the colors, she chose the framing. I I wanted to uh, convey the idea of we're looking into story, like we're looking using a microscope to look into story. And she came up with this little idea of a microscope looking into a book, very literally. And she drew that. I love it. Yeah. And it looks so, to me, it just looks, it's I'm so proud of her for this. I, I'm, this is one of my favorite parts of the book is the fact that my daughter did the cover for it. <laughs> yes. I'm so proud of her too. Do you want to give her a shout out and thank I, you? She, what's yeah. her name? Um, her name is Jenya Mason. Uh, she goes by Sunny because that's her personality. She's just so sunny. She's um, such a sweetheart and so caring. Um, so um, I'm glad to to uh, acknowledge her for this. Uh, in fact, um, uh, if you need to hire, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sure. She's going into high school uh, next week is the first day, and um, and uh, she's going to take um, graphic design as her elective. Oh, and I think she's going to be the first professional because I paid her for this. I didn't get this for free. Don't get, don't, <laughs> I'm glad to pay for it too. That's but she's going to be the first professional to go into a, you know, high school class. <laughs> she's going to do great. And I just want to say hi, Sunny, and thank you and acknowledge you. And it's a beautiful cover, Sunny. And also I, I see you, Sunny. I love the ombre uh, effect that you have on there, the changing of the colors. Um, I love the colors that you chose and the format. And it's a little bit, there's a little bit of vintage to it with the uh, font. And I just, I appreciate that so much and it's beautiful. And so I just, and I love that microscope into the book, looking into it. It's just a fabulous concept. And it delivers it, and and I and I love even on the back cover you can see she's added the um, detail of the microscope with a little bit of um, you know a, a little like an bit open of, book. 
Yeah. That's the ornamental design that you'll see throughout the inside of the book whenever there's a section change. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So I see why you're so proud of her, James. Thank and you. Um, because it's beautiful and it's 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 really wonderful. And I just love the colors and everything. So well done, Sunny. Well, well done. And um, yeah, so I wanted to do that. And now I did want to ask you, will you be going on a book tour or you're open to it, right? Are you op open to national, local? What type well, of book tours are you open I'm to? James. I'm not sure. I'm doing this all on my own and I've never done it before. So um, if uh, anyone has advice, I'm I'm welcome to uh, you know listen to anyone's advice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure about a, a national tour, but I would uh, definitely love to do um, you know a book signing and I'd love to talk to anybody about the book and and uh, um, and so the um the pre-orders aren't up yet they'll be up any day it was supposed to be up but um i'm probably it's probably going to be monday or tuesday before they're up for because amazon itself doesn't do pre-orders um oh, okay. in order to do a pre-order you have to use a different service so um so there's some uh uh hoops that I have to learn how to go through in order to get it up for pre-order. Uh, but if anything else, I don't know if anybody watches this right now or if they're watching it in the near future, um, it will be available on um, uh, September 1st for, um, for order. And, you know, the idea of, you know, if everybody could do it on the first, that would make it awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I wanted to talk about two things. I got some, uh, I'm getting some really great reviews. I got a forward by uh, the senior story editor at William Morris Endeavor. His name is Christopher Lockhart. And uh, he gave me such a glowing endorsement. I'm so happy. And another script consultant, um, uh, Michael Klug, uh, who is uh, just a great guy, um, gave me some uh, a great um, blurb, which uh, I'm waiting on others to, because it's such a big book. I'm waiting on others to, to give me uh, their uh, blurbs. And so if anybody is interested in, um, please leave a review or a comment uh, on Amazon after you've read it, or um, um, if you want to, if you need to read it before, if you, um, if you want to write a blurb for the book, uh, please get in touch with me and I'll, and I'll make sure you get a copy early. Beautiful. Thank you so much, James. I, I can do that on a limited basis. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it is, it's very special. So thank you for that, James. Um, you also write a newsletter. Um, where can people sign up uh, for that? You have a, a newsletter, is that right? Or, or do you still do your, um, do you have a newsletter on your website or do you have a writing group that people I, can... I, I have a writer's group that um, I have um, a small writer's group. We meet online. Um, uh, I don't do a newsletter. Uh, I will um, do promotions for the book through um, wow. through an, uh, an online thing through the website. Okay. If somebody wants to do that, I'll, uh, what that'll do is I'll, it's, it's more of a marketing thing so that you can become a member of our, um, you know, basically what they call a book army, you know, it helps people to promote the book and, and all the help I can get, you know, through recommendation, uh, through, um, um, you know, through liking and, and, uh, and I hope to have more, uh, more marketing things in the future. Uh, it's just that um, I got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> I, understand. So, I understand well you're doing great James and um, I know it's going to be very successful uh, for you and uh, very proud of uh, a very well written beautifully um, executed uh, ebook and physical book and so congratulations thank you so much AJ I appreciate all the you know this opportunity to share my my little baby with the world it means a lot to me. It's wonderful. Any other shout outs or anybody else you'd like to mention? I know you uh, mentioned a couple people there that helped you. Uh, anything mm -hmm. else that you would like to mention or uh, promote? Um, there's a lot of people who have been so incredibly supportive um, and 
it, it'd be kind of unfair to mention some and not mention others, right? So let me see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to mention that, um, uh, um, you know, the P Patty and I and Kimberly are working on something, uh, as you know, uh, and I'm going to keep quiet about that. But I'm so excited to share this that, um, yeah. uh, and I'm sure in the future, maybe we'll do this again to talk yeah. about that project. But uh, let me just say that that um, um, uh, my dear friend, John Ford, who for more than 20 years, he and I have been trying to get this movie made. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I'm going to say that I value uh, that kind of support and commitment and uh, you know, that, that the one thing I can think about uh, the filmmaking community is we, we f find a family where mm -hmm. we choose our family yeah. and, uh, and John and Patty and Kimberly and you uh, were, uh, we've got this new family and I'm so excited. Um, so I am too. I am. I'm thrilled. I'm super excited as well. And um, I have such a good feeling about it. And I, I, I won't say any more, but it's it's wonderful. And uh, in the future, yes, we'll definitely have you on and maybe John and if Kimberly and Patty would like to come on as well. We Oh my gosh, I'd love the whole family all together. We could just promote it. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be so much fun. <laughs> I'll look yeah, thank you to, to all my writers group friends and all the people who gave me feedback, uh, you know, and this is a labor of love more than two years in the making. And uh, I am so honored to to share th what was in this little brain of mine with the world. And um, and I hope it makes it hope it contributes to Hollywood making better movies in mm -hmm. some small way. <laughs> yes, it's so needed. It's so needed because there isn't. Uh, a lot of books about the log line that go into such detail and such explanation. Right. And I appreciate that. It's like, it's like um, reading your book is like um, a master class with a professor. So I just, we appreciate your knowledge and your expertise, right? Yeah. All of that experience, it's, it, it's yeah. worth something. It's, it's important, <laughs> isn't it, James? Right, and there's dozens of movies in there that you may not have even seen and now you're going to have to go and watch them because I'm, <laughs> hopefully my description of them makes you want to go, oh, my God, that, I want to see that movie. <laughs> yes, I love that. And I know a lot of the film uh, film aficionados will love that, too, because um, they always like to find out good movies to watch. Uh, I know I do with my husband, Jeff. Same thing. So, OK, well, you know what? It's gone so fast. Oh, so I'm fast. so sorry. We're going to have to start wrapping it up. But before we go... I wanted to ask you your heart message uh, for the world because we always do our heart messages. And uh -huh. um, also, um, you know, afterwards, James, I would like you to uh, hold on the line because I have something, a special message, a special gift, uh, oh. a connection that I would like to connect you with a person. Okay, so we'll talk about that um, after the show. Okay, it's my honor and and pleasure and privilege um but my heart message is um just like james put his uh brilliance um uh, on pen to paper and um digital ebook now as well i also want to encourage everybody else out there to if you if there's something on your bucket list or if there's something that is on your heart to do please do it now because um, tomorrow is, you know, a gift. Today is all we have, um, but do it, do it now and um, do, make your dreams come true. So that's what I wanted to encourage everybody um, that goes along with, because this is a, a, a dream of yours, isn't it? This, this book, James, Absolutely. over to you. I, I think that um, I start out the book with my philosophy of writing. And the philosophy of writing is to always, you know, seek to understand. So I'm going to leave it with the opening quote, which is by me <laughs> in my book. <laughs> there is no better feeling for the writer, for any human really, than to be understood. However, to be understood, one must first seek to understand. Wow. 
I love that. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. I, I can't top that. That's eloquent and exquisite in every way, James. As as such a um, prestigious author and screenwriter would say, you've got it. You you said it eloquently and beautifully. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have uh, that. I'm gonna have you um, be the final word on that. But uh, thank you so much, James, for being thank an you, excellent Sarah. guest. And I look forward to uh, the next time that we um, are we're together again and um, also promoting our a project that we're working on. And so until next time, au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> Arigato. <laughs> Arigato. <laughs>